G'day football fans and welcome back to episode 31 of Brentford at 2 Big Time. Today we are taking on Manchester United. Of course we had to get that in there. Being man manager of Manchester City, I mean, two videos so far we've played Chelsea, we've played Arsenal. We're playing Manchester United. I mean, we, we do Liverpool too, but I mean, at this point in time, they're much, much better than us. Um, it's not good. Anyway, today we're taking on Manchester, as I said, um, uh, it's the Manchester Derby. We've got them to compete with for top four. Uh, which is something we haven't had in a number of years, which is very surprising to say. Um, there's been ups, there's been downs, there's plenty to get you through. We're about to cover it all. Make sure you leave us that like down below. Subscribe if you're new around here. Comment what you think of the video, all that sort of stuff. Let's get cracking. So where we'll start for you in this video is the transfer history screen, because we've, we've come to the end of the January transfer, of course. I mean, it's now the start of March, so clearly it's the end. Um, we did make one uh, further transfer, but it's not an exciting one. It's an, I mean sort of sign him because he's Australian, but he's Australian. He's 20 years old. He looks pretty good. He's he's what we want in a left footed right winger cutting on the inside. Um, loaned him back to Bristol, see how he gets on. Um, I don't know. He looks pretty good and I'm excited that he's Australian and he's pretty good. That's about it. He's now the record transfer for an Australian um, overtaking uh, Harry Sousa for, for Leicester. And uh, that's about it. Um, so we signed him. That's all. And the reason we were only, uh, you know, willing to do the business, I was going to say able to, but it's willing is, is probably more the, the correct way of putting it, is um, the people that left in the January window is the people we've highlighted here. They're all just loanees. Like, they're all just loanees. And, I mean, Michael Taggart, who was never going to be anything, so I got rid of him. Um, uh, other than that, I like it. We couldn't... I tried to get rid of Dembele. I tried to get rid of Grealish. I tried to get rid of... Uh, Smith Rowe, um, I think he even tried to get rid of um, Murato, uh, but you just can't get it done. You just cannot, because of their wages, no one will touch them. Um, so Jack Grealish is going at the end of this season, it's the end of his contract, he's gone. Then we've got one year left, I think, of both Dembele and Smith Rowe. Smith Rowe, maybe that's not correct, but definitely Dembele we've got one more year of. Um, we're just stuck with him, so we can't really... Progress in the way that I want to, the team to progress and, and, you know, change up the way that the midfield works and change up, you know, obviously the wingers um, until we get rid of them. Um, so, yeah, we're just sort of holding out the second half of this season, hoping that we can compete, win something, see how we get on. That's about it. Before I run through the fixtures before you were last here, of course, um, I want to apologise that someone's dog is going absolutely mental, not stop barking. Um, luckily, my two dogs not barking back yet. If and when there's random cuts in the video, um, it's probably because my dogs have started going mental because this other dog is also just being mental. It's been going for like 25 minutes. I held off recording and then I'm like, I need to I need to get this done. I need to, uh, time is of the essence. It's just not happening. Anyway, last video we beat Arsenal 2-1. Two goals for Oscar Pereira. Pereira, not I said Pereira. That's not it. Two goals for Pereira, that's it. Dagen in Redbridge, just the just the nine nil. Four goals for Erling Haaland, one for T Bernardo. I just nearly said David Silva. Goodness me, two for Denilson Carpentero, one for Foden, one for Butcher. Then Norwich one nil. We scored after about thirty seconds, and then nothing happened the rest of the game. That's ex that's as exciting as it comes. Then against uh, Brondby in the Europa League, six nil. Araujo two for Carpentero, who's been sensational. Makoko, Danilo, and Morato getting goals. We then lose to Aston Villa and two goals scorer is Keane Lewis Potter, who, if you've watched the whole series, we we were against him, we, we had him, we sold him. We sold him to Aston Villa, because I didn't like him. And then he's come and scored two goals against us, the absolute prick. Um, so that was a 3-1 loss, we just weren't at it, we didn't play very well. We beat Bologna 3-0, thanks to Grealish, and 2-4 Phil Foden. 1-0 over West Ham, thanks to Erling Haaland. 4-0 over Bristol in the FA Cup. Four different goal scorers there, which is sensational. One all against Crystal Palace, a 97th minute penalty. In fact, it was given away, uh, like there were five minutes of added on time, and the penalty was given away by Araujo on 95 minutes and 38 seconds or something like that. So, you know, that one felt good. Um, we then beat Tottenham 3-1, which is sensational. Two goals there for Haaland, one for Pereira and one for Tadeo, which nobody cares about. Then against, just a week ago now, basically, um, Against Manchester United, it was one all in the FA Cup, and then they won on penalties because Makoko missed, Edison missed, then Dembele missed. Yeah, frustrating. Um, then in the round of 16 against Rangers, who we've got, um, we won the away leg 2-0 thanks to two goals from Denilson Carpentero, who's been sensational. And if you look at him, 
I, I don't think I've ever seen like that color green on things. Um, like he's, it's the reason I'm weirded out by it is that he's not like across the board, not really improving, improving that much on anything else. Like passing is improving apparently, but three very much key things, <laughs> which I'm pretty chuffed about. I like the greenest of green. I'm into it. Um, He's been pretty good though. I mean, for a 21 year old now, he's a striker, but I'm playing him as an inside winger on the the, the right hand side because we've got Makoko and Haaland. So why would I play this guy? Um, he's got 10 goals and four assists, mostly playing off the bench, but an average rating of 7.08. It's pretty damn good. Cannot complain. As for the rest of the squad, though, as we look at it, goal scorers Erling Haaland's got 31. He's wanted by Bayern Munich again. So is Phil Foden. We signed Erling Haaland to a contract literally like two months ago to ward off interest from Bayern Munich and still here. Makoko's got 17 goals, which is sensational. Foden's got 12. Then Nilsson, the next best on 10. Then Bernardo at 34 has got, what's that, 23 goal involvements already. So nine goals, 14 assists. Absolutely sensational stuff. Assists, it is Bernardo on top. Then Butcher, Perea, Lukanets, Bill Foden, Bradley. I mean, it's... So we, we see the two left backs up there a bit higher than the right backs. And I think that's because I've got the left backs as um, wing back on attack. And for most of the season, the right backs have been on support. I've changed that now. If we go to the tactics, the right backs are on attack. Don't pay attention to the lineup. This isn't finalized or anything. I haven't even looked at who's in, who's out, who's whatever. Basically, we, you know, I wanted to even it out and, and, the more goals we can create, the more chances we can create, the better off we are, I suppose. Um, as long as we can, you know, keep them out at the other end. As far as the best performers, of course, it's Erling Haaland. Of course, James Trafford's up there. Um, and then Bukoko, second best, is our, is our backup striker, which is sensational. I mean, I didn't come in expecting him to be that good because I think if you look at his first season, as some birds go absolutely mental. His first season here, he played... He must have signed halfway through the season. Yeah, he has done. Because um, he had half a season here where he scored five goals in 16 appearances. Then in 10 appearances, he scored twice. Eight appearances being off the bench. He has continued to play a lot off the bench, but in 33 games, he scored 17 goals. So it's uh, about a goal every other game. I mean, can't complain with that. I mean, going from a goal every five games to a goal every second game. Pretty damn good. Pretty happy with that one. And uh, just adding a nice little four assists. That is pretty damn good too. Other than that, let's look at the contracts. Yep, Grealish expiring this summer. Uh, Smith Rowe the summer after. Dembele the summer after. People like Kimmich, uh, Edison and Silva, I've like extended their contracts as much as I can with like a... Um, I signed them to basically a new deal and gave them like an extension clause um, and they now are uh, to the end of next season and then we'll see. See how they are getting on. Um, Kimmich, of course... On his way back from a damaged Achilles tendon. Um, we'll see how he recovers, basically, as to whether we try and then extend it further. Dembele not performing well. Kind of want to get rid of him, um, as you can probably tell by the amount of substitute appearances. Um, that's about it. Let's get through to our lineup against Manchester United in the derby. The lineup we are going to go with then is Edison in goals, a back four of Aaron's, Timber, Morato, and Nets. Midfield three is our best midfield three that we had all season. Is Ugarte holding with Danilo and uh, Bernardo Silva ahead of him. Foden on the right, Pereira on the left, and Haaland up top. Bench looking pretty good. We've got good fitness going on. I mean, a couple of players that are struggling, um, you know, with injuries and and, and the like. Um, I mean, also, like Grealish and Smith, I've sort of been pushing out of the team because I'm not really fond of them. I, I, it's, they're not doing it for me. They're not good enough at this point. Um, Araujo just off the pace a bit and giving him a break, basically. I mean, we've got... Plenty of cover, so I think we'll be all right without him. Um, in the FA Cup, when we did versus Manchester United, uh, of course, just a couple of games ago, um, we were the better side. Like, for the the 90 minutes, we were the team that created more, that had more possession, that sort of thing. Um, we just couldn't get a second goal past Alden Lafont, who ended up being man of the match, um, and then, you know, went on to the penalty shootout, and he saved three of the five penalties he faced. So... Pretty, pretty miffed about that one. Um, looking at their lineup, um, it's a weird one. It's weird to see Nuno Tavares there. They also had someone else weird um, last time. I can't remember who, but um, you know, we'll get on. We'll 
we'll, we'll see, I suppose. Um, as for our team, pretty happy with it. Um, probably want to get, get a better winger um, in place of Perea next season, maybe if Perea goes elsewhere. Because that's the thing, like, we don't have squad space. With the amount of people that we have, with the amount of players we have earning way too much, like Dembele and Grealish mostly, really, um, are the worst, I guess, cul- culprits. That we just don't uh, have the space to bring people in. And while I'd want to bring in, like, a superstar winger to replace Perea, as I said, um, maybe another midfielder uh, to replace, like as a backup to Bernardo, so I don't have to use Phil Foden as a Mazala. We don't have the squad space. We don't have the money. I mean, we do have the money. <laughs> no, that's not true at all. We don't have the squad space. Um, here's the first highlight. It's Sadikov, just why that's lucky. Very fortunate. Yeah, so I mean, that's the plan for next season, um, but it very much depends on how many people we can get rid of um, and whether we you know, have the right people to replace them with. We do have a couple of people out on loan that look very, uh, pretty good. There's a, a Chinese international, um, I think he's on loan at Leeds. Um, his name's Fu Hao. Um, he's looking very, very good. He's not having like an, a super outstanding season at Leeds, but I mean, he's, a, he's at Leeds, so I can't really, you know, comment too much on that, I suppose. Um, but he's looking very, very good. And um, he's probably going to slot straight in next season, basically. I mean, depending again, on how many people we can actually get rid of. Because, like, you can't get rid of Dembele because he earns too much. Nobody's going to pay his wage without you, you know, letting him go for much less than he's worth and also contributing to the, like, his wage when he leaves. It's just, it's it's tough. It's very, very tough. And I don't want to be put in that position. But, you know, if we're going to actually progress and, and compete with Liverpool, with, I mean, Newcastle are up there with um, uh, Liverpool, competing um we we might have to i don't know we'll see here's another highlight during timber on the ball forward for foden over the top for harland against scalvini gets it through gets himself his 30 second goal of the scene scene i went to say scalvini and season that was embarrassing um he's he's very good though isn't he mr harland holds scalvini off very very well it said scalvini missed his interception but i'm not really entirely sure on how that works foden lobs it over the top Galvini, there's never in it really. I mean, Harlan just sort of pushed him off the ball and then and then whacked it in the net past Alban Lafont. We'll absolutely take those. Hit a praise after that because we've taken the lead. It's sensational. I'll just pause for two seconds while I change this to league table so you can see just what this means. If we get the three points here, if it stays like this, we're then seven points ahead of Manchester United, just the one point behind Arsenal, and then there's a bit of a gap. Up to Liverpool, Newcastle, the two best sides in the league this season. That's half time. Sensational. If the second half can blow by like that, I mean, with I mean, there was two highlights. I think um, as long as it, the two highlights don't involve them scoring, I'll be very happy. Um, we'll go straight into the second half. I mean, why not? It's weird to see Bruno Fernandez playing as their out and out striker. Been a lot of rumours um, that you know how they come through your inbox or whatever. Um, they've been linked with like. Uh, Endrick, they've been linked with, uh, not Mbappe, but like someone like clearly like, okay, they, they're in the market for a striker. Um, then they just haven't pulled it off yet. They're probably going to, I don't know, they've probably got youths that they're, um, producing. That's the word. Um, but here was their, their star signing in January was Sadikov, who gives it back here to Kuchku. Bruno Fernandes then hits the post. It looks like scary, scary stuff. Man, everything in the world wants to make noise as soon as I hit record. That dang dang dog that won't shut up. Um, And now there's just birds. There's so many birds outside. I don't understand. Damn birds, eh? You know, they're just bloody mental. There's just like heaps of... If you go like out back behind where we live, um, which is in front of where I'm facing, um, there's like big properties. There's like people who have horses and, you know... um, not that I'm in the country, but you know what I mean. Um, there's just like big properties, so they have big trees. Um, and there's just birds and birds and birds that sit on them. God damn, they're loud and annoying in the afternoon. Harlan nearly gets a red card, looks like, that challenge. Max Ahrens wins it off Sudikov. Sudikov, Sud- Sudikov, I don't know. Bernardo back out to Ahrens. Now for Phil Foden. Foden, oh, he was going to get tackled and there was going to be a counter, but instead played it back to Timber, who found Ahrens, who finds Harland. Who puts another one in? He's got his 33rd of the season. We've got a 2-0 lead. That is sensational. To put us 
to put that gap between us, between the two sides and to put us, you know, one step closer to Champions League qualification because that will make a big difference to keeping the players that we want to keep around like Haaland, like Timber, like Foden, um, like Diaz, uh, I could go on. Um, it'll make a huge difference just qualifying for, for the Champions League. Um, uh, not only keeping people, but also attracting new people. So it's going to be a big deal if we can actually make sure that we do get it. We're not necessarily competing with Liverpool. We're maybe a year off. We need that good transfer window next year with, um, you know, Haaland turning, I mean, what is he, 20, I think he's only 28. Um, so he'll be 29 next season. So, I mean, he has a limited amount of years left, but still he's, you know, he's 28, he's scoring 33 goals. He's very much in his prime, really. So we've we've got years left in him, but, you know, I, I want to get a move, <laughs> move on because I want to, as this um, uh, series has developed, it's turned into you know, wanting to win all five of the top leagues um, because we did Europe too quickly, basically. Um, but now that it's, now that it is the winning all the five leagues, that's going to take forever. Uh, it's going to be a really long series. That's a hat-trick. <laughs> hat-trick for Erling Haaland. Get in there. Get in there. It is 3-0, a superb Manchester City goal. Absolutely sensational. Perfect hat-trick for Erling Haaland. Header, one with each foot. This time it's set up by Phil Foden. Max Ahrens plays a ball down the side. Phil Foden cuts back onto his left, of course he does. Just fires it in at Haaland's head, who just has to turn it. Bounces off his head into the bottom corner. Three, damn, nil. I'll, at that juncture, we've got a bunch of tired players, if you will take note of their condition here. So Haaland can come off now that he's done his job. <laughs> Ugarte can come off. We've been playing a bunch of centre-backs there recently. So I think I'll take off, I'll bring on Ostergaard and move Timber forward. Um, then Perea's tired, so we'll bring on Ndala. And that'll do for now. We've got some subs left, like Carpenter can come on for someone and, you know, we've got people left. Um, what was I saying anyway? Oh, man, I got so distracted by scoring that goal. Um, oh, yeah, just um, as I'm wanting to win all the five leagues, I don't necessarily want that to be, you know, a five, six, seven year project with any of the teams, you know, I, I, I want to get them done, son. Um, and with Manchester City's resources and the quality of some of the players that we do have and we are able to keep around, we should be looking to do that quick, quickly, really. Um, another 10 minutes has gone by. I'll make the last two subs, which looks like it'll be rough going. Um, let's change... All right, Luka Nets can come off for Joad Bucha and then uh, let's bring on Carpintero for Bernardo and move Phil Voden back. All right, that'll do um, because basically the changes that we make now are guaranteeing who can and can't play against Rangers. Um, oh, you, sh you absolute monkey. Are you serious? Has he just come on to or was he 10 minutes ago? Far out. That is... Ridiculous. All right. Anyway, we've got the players who can fill in those positions, so we're probably fine. But are you serious? Like, what can we play? He's going to have to play something defensive. Bowden, what can you do that's somewhat defensive? You can play as a deep line playmaker as well. And then we'll drop these guys to just support because I don't want to, in the last 15 minutes, throw this away. Let's not play out of defense. Let's just lob it and pass it into space. All right. And we'll distribute it to flanks. Um, just regroup and and hold our shape. Those birds are nuts. Shut up. Oh my God. I'm going to lose my mind. Um, as well, the, these injuries are also making me lose my mind, but I guess less so than um, the sound of birds, which is probably saying something about my psyche and, and how fragile it is, but that's fine. That's absolutely fine. Um, I'll, I'll get through it somehow. Um, what else was I talking about? Man, I can't remember. Um, yeah, I want to finish all of the leagues. I want to get through it. Um, and then get onto another series where we can... Uh, what I want to do is stick at a club for a long time and like to the point where regens are uh, most of, if not all, of our team. Like, you know, we're starting to integrate some of them. I want to get all of them. But at the end of the day, we need to win the league here and this is taking a giant step towards it with, you know, lengthening our lead uh, in the Champions League places up to seven points thanks to a 3-0 win over Manchester United. I don't care about the FA Cup. I care about beating Manchester United in the league. Fantastic stuff. So there you have it. A nice 3-0 win over Manchester United, making a gap now seven points between 
us and non-Champions League football, basically, and that's all that matters right now. Um, if we look at the competitions, look, we won the Friendly Cup, everybody cares about it, knocked out of the FA Cup, that's fine, knocked out of the Carabao Cup, whatever. Europa League, we are through, um, we did win the league phase, the only team to win all eight, which, you know, something to celebrate, I suppose. Um, it's a competition we should be getting to the latter stages of. Looking at the other teams in it, we should be getting to the latter stages. Has been won a lot by English teams. I mean, in the six years of this save, it's been won by three English, two German and an Italian. Anyway, um, yeah, we should be getting to the latter stages. We're looking good to do so because um, we're now in the round of 16 and we've got a 2-0 lead and we'll head through to the, the quarterfinals against... Looking at the rest of the sides there, really all sides that we should be able to beat with the quality that we do have. You know, we'll see though, I guess. Um, anyway, that'll um, that'll wrap up today's video. Next video, we'll come back to the end of the season. It'll be either this game against Leeds or maybe a double header with Leeds and then the, the final of the Europa League, which it'd be good to win, I guess. Uh, win a trophy in any respect um, and, you know, adding a... Something else to the resume. We've won an Italian Cup. We've won a Serie A. We've won two Champions Leagues. Why not add a, a Europa League um, or, or anything else with it? We'll see. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Make sure you do leave us a like down below. Subscribe if you're new around here. Comment what you think of the video. All of that gorgeous stuff. And I will see you next time. Peace.